Hello and welcome to this section of the MATLAB Tutor. Here we're going to continue working with vectors and I'm going to teach you how to use mathematical functions uh, built into MATLAB to operate on vectors. Um, so just to kind of ease ourselves into it, let's define some vector. We'll call it Jason. Uh, we'll open this up and we'll just put some numbers in here. We'll put 0 or we'll put 1 you know 2.4 or 2.23 you know 5.6 or something like that so we have um, these elements four elements of vector JSON and we've already learned in previous section that sections that when you take uh, 2 and multiply by JSON then MATLAB is going to this is this is mathematically correct as well you would just make basically multiply each element by the number 2 Bult multiplying a vector or a matrix by a scalar just simply multiplies each element times that guy so you can do things like you know JSON divided by 2 which is basically multiplying by 1 half so we take each element of JSON and we multiply it by 1 half is the same thing as dividing by 2 so you can do things like um, JSON plus JSON divided by 2 and so what you'll get is you'll ta take the matrix or the, el the elements of JSON you'll divide by 2 so this guy divided by 2 would be 0. 0.5 and then you add it to the first element of JSON so you go element by element taking half of it and adding it to the original element uh, according to this little equation there so you can basically do multiplication and division on vectors and have them apply element by element automatically alright so what if you want to do things like uh, define a vector in this case we have a vector JSON what if you want to take the sine of each element in here or the cosine or the square root of each element here now those are mathematical operations that aren't really you know usually discussed much when you talk about vectors and matrices usually you're not defining a vector or a matrix and then trying to take the square root of all the elements in there um, so but MATLAB when you apply these mathematical functions most of the time it defaults to trying to apply them element by element so for instance if you wanted to take the sine of JSON then it's going to treat this as basically a list of numbers and it's going to return another vector that's going to give you the sine of each one of these values you know you might want to even define another vector um, that to make this a little bit easier so you could say 0 the next element might be pi and the next element might be pi over 2 so let's go ahead and define a, uh, a vector with these three elements here and you can see here I made a little mistake you need to make sure not capitalize the P and pi uh, so if you ever get something like that, that's that's what MATLAB is basically complaining about. So here we have uh, a vector. This is pi, and this is pi over two. So we might want to do the sine of vector Gibson. So that makes sense, right? Sine of zero is zero. Sine of pi is uh, also zero, and sine of pi over two is one. So that makes sense. You can also take the cosine of these guys, and it will be applied element by element. So we've taken the sine and the cosine of our vector. Gibson which has our nice numbers in there we can even do things like taking the tangent of Gibson so the trig functions basically all apply element by element now I want to point out if you ever see something like this the answer is this large number times this vector that it puts down here so sometimes depending on the number format you're in instead of putting it doesn't have enough room to put all the decimals in the individual elements because of the of the way that we have the um, the number format it might give you a vector and then it might tell you that this whole vector is multiplied by a large number or a very small number or something so if you ever see a number multiplied by a vector it's giving you the same information it's just there's not enough room to show that stuff there you can do things like uh, format long ENG uh, and then you can do that calculation again and then you'll see all the decimals and all of their glory there so it's just a matter of uh, how many decimals you have uh, on the screen so we've done the trigonometric functions what else can you do with these guys um, let's bring up our vector Jason the original one that we uh, entered in what if you wanted to uh, take e and raise it to the power of each one of these things like e to the 1 e to the 2.2 e to the 3 e to the 5.6 well to raise uh, e to the power of something in MATLAB it's the exp function and when you pass it an argument like a vector like this it's going to treat everything element by element and so e to the 1 of course this is the value of e e to the 2.2 power is this and so on so it applies element by element uh, what if you had wanted to do the logarithm this is a, a base e a natural logarithm um, if I wanted to apply this guy then 
uh, it applies again element by element. So natural log of one is zero, natural log of 2.2 .2 is this, and so on down, down, the, down the line. It's exactly the same thing as if you had typed them in separately. It's just keeping them all encapsulated in this sort of vector format. Um, what else is pretty common? You might want to take the square root of something. You can take the square root of this vector and it will uh, basically apply the square root function element by element. Now occasionally you'll run into one of these things that doesn't quite work the way you might expect. What if you wanted to take the number 2 or let's say the number 3 and raise it to the power of a vector Jason. In other words I wanted to take 3 and raise it to the first power and then 3 raise it to the 2.2 .2 power and then 3 raise it to the 3 power and basically apply it element by element. When you do that it says error using this symbol input must be a scalar and a square matrix to compute uh, element wise power use this instead and that should ring a bell because this little guy if you ever run into problems doing element by element if you get an error message then basically the reason you usually get an error message like that is because there's some other rule of math that you're violating um, taking three and then raising it to the power of a vector doesn't really make much sense mathematically so instead of defaulting to element by element MATLAB just gives you an error message if you ever get that you just need to force it to work element by element and so then you have to put the dot in front of the operator and when we do that we get what we expect so three to the power of one uh, is 3, 3 to the power of 2.2 .2 is this, and so on. So that is about all I want to talk about in this section. Um, vectors are, are basically ways of storing lists of numbers. A lot of times you might want to operate on element-wise is what we really call it, element by element. Um, you know, Taking the square root of a vector in terms of math doesn't make much sense. Taking the logarithm of, of a vector really isn't defined in terms of mathematics. Here we're kind of getting into that region where we're not looking for the mathematical definition of e to the power of a vector, but what we're wanting to do is do it element-wise. So most of the time MATLAB is smart enough to do that. If you ever get an error message, then you might have to force it to work element-wise, which is why this operator here that we learned with the dot is so important in MATLAB.